All right, and that is our video interlude for Iran Tech Hub. Um, as I was mentioning, our next speaker is Professor Yahya Talbesh of Sharif University. He has been a mentor and has taught many brilliant students at Sharif. And there's one student in particular that many of you now probably know as a household name. She's someone our community is incredibly proud of. And join me in looking at this next moment. I wasn't always very excited about math. I was more excited about reading novels than I thought I would become a writer one day. I got excited about it maybe just as a challenge, but then I realized that it's really nice and that I enjoy it. These were quite difficult times. It was during the war. Right after the war, I had a lot of opportunities. I went to a very good middle school and then high school. I think I was the lucky generation because I was a teenager when things became more stable. My main interest is understanding structures you can put on a surface. There are different ways of looking at it. Either you have a surface with some additional geometric structures or this kind of problems are related to understanding the space of such structures. One very famous example is if you have a billiard table and you start from a point and you hit the ball and it hits the boundary and it moves say, forever, you want to see the trajectory of the ball. I think these problems are important because they are related to some other problems. Even if you are interested in higher dimensional manifolds, one way of dealing with them is trying to find some nice surface inside of them. You end up learning a lot about other spaces and properties of other actions. So it gives you a lot of information. It's not only the question, but the way you try to solve it. And now if Dr. Tabesh can join us on the stage. We'd now like to welcome Mr. Yahya Tabesh to the stage. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Okay, good afternoon. I am very happy to be here and well, thank you so much. I'm proud of Mariam and all of my students, former students, colleagues, 
I'm proud of talented Iranian and achievements. Well, uh, uh, I, I am going to talk a little bit about fostering entrepreneurship in Iran. Uh, I, I, I will go through a background, maybe I have uh, said before for some of you, but I have to go a historical background and see how is the situation over this uh, high-tech development in Iran. And later on at the final slides, I have some suggestions that will bring some, uh, maybe uh, as I am a teacher, maybe I will bring some homeworks that we should discuss it and uh, to, uh, to have a final approval, some, receive some of your ideas. Okay, I, I, as I mentioned, I will go through history and you can see, uh, I would like to talk about the initiatives in the modern era, later on what could be in the postmodern era, in the internet era, and uh, how could we promote it and how could we foster it. Uh, as I told you, I mentioned before, the, everything, the modern era, I believe, happened, started in Iran after Turkmen Chai, uh, Treaty of Turkmen Chai and losing the war between Iran and Rus, Iran and Russia in Russo-Persian War. Uh, the Crown Prince uh, Abbas Mirza uh, uh, found that the reason for losing the war was lack of technology and lack of science and new sciences. So decided to uh, dispatch some students to the Europe for uh, receiving the new uh, science and technology over there. This is the starting point. Later on, the most important thing is Dar al Funun. Amir Kabir founded it, and uh, you know all the story about it. Uh, the movement of uh, new education system, new education system started after Dar al Funun was a higher institute of higher education, but the uh, Elementary school started later, but Mirza Hassan Rushdie, you know about it, first started in Tabriz and 10 years later in Tehran. But in modern era, we can continue the constitutional revolution in 1906. It is the same, same time that discovery of oil in Iran. And later on, military coup in 1921, a new atmosphere for modernization of the Iran started uh, the first thing in uh, I have to say I'm in educational point and uh, my point of view is more educational and in uh, thinking about uh, developing human resources I started with dispatching 100 students yearly later on Tehran University and the same railway development as an initiative for the development industrial development in Iran happened it goes to occupation of Iran in the Second World War, 1941. And after that, uh, after finishing the war, new universities opened in Iran. Again, we had a situation for the nationalization of the oil industries in Iran. After that, uh, in, in 1960s, it was again some situation for developing industrial and technological and educational aspects in Iran. In 1965, we had Isfahan Steel Factory as an initiative for development, and uh, other industries also started, auto industry and also some others in Iran. Uh, also happened reconstruction of higher education in the 1960s, with uh, Shiraz University, that time was Pahlavi University, and Sharif University was Arya Mehr University of Technology. They reconstructed the higher education in Iran that bring so much influence over the development of educational system in Iran. Uh, we go to last 25 years, Islamic Revolution happened in 1979, and uh, after a while, uh, in the beginning of revolution, everything was somehow different, but after that, in educational system, a lot of new things happened. We had cultural revolution some years, universities was closed and a lot of problems was there. But after, after a while, uh, we had a developing public and private universities. We started PhD programs for the first time in, after that in Iran in 1980s. And also research and development, research become and uh, 
certain focus for the faculty member in the university due to PhD program. Uh, later on, after uh, beginning of revolution, a lot of things changed, but in the eight, 80s, 1980s, after war, we had a free market approach. Who uh, uh, it brought a new situation in Iran when we had a different situation. I tell you about some figures at the moment. We have almost 100 public universities and research institute, 500 private university universities and colleges, and the most important thing. More than 4 million, 4 million 400 college students. More than 50% are girls. In, uh, uh, if we want to go to uh, technology development, we have to look over the research at the universities. We have a high quantity of research papers, but low quality, low impact factor. We need more time. We need more talented students to be uh, educated in a more deep way to uh, change the situation of research in Iran. Let me look at the technological development in Iran. At the moment, in many universities, we have incubator and science parks in major universities, but very low efficiency due to some bureaucratic aspects that you can find there. Very, very low efficiency. We have success stories in nano and biotechnologies, but uh, far from business model. There is no, uh, you cannot find a certain business model of them. As uh, Mr. Nazari mentioned and other respected colleagues from Iran, tens of IT companies are with uh, success stories, but only on local market. They are not, uh, they couldn't go to regional market even. I have to say, if uh, we want to go to uh, the de technological development and fostering entrepreneurship over there, we should look for an uh, initiative for development. Uh, I believe after World War I, the railway was initiative for development. After World War II, a steel industry was the initiative for development. But in 21st century, I believe knowledge-based economy could be the initiative for development in Iran. Okay, if uh, we have the knowledge-based economy at initiative for development and a lot of human resource over there, more than four million students in the universities. So let us think about it, how we can manage it, how we can bring them together uh, for uh, better uh, development and uh, better economical situation over there. We have to look over the limit of limit to the growth. Uh, I believe the private sector still is Iran is very weak. We uh, we are in the situation of non-developed private sectors. Another obstacle is non-member of global economy. Economy and technology is a global now. We cannot be isolated and develop an economical system. Uh, this is the most important obstacle. Non-developed infrastructure, lack of ecosystem. A lot of speakers talked about it, how the situation is over there. Uh, a certain ecosystem is needed. The Silicon Valley is because of the ecosystem, so su successful here. Uh, also, lack of IP protection. Uh, when you want to have an innovative uh, economy and uh, knowledge-based economy, Protection of IP is too important. I believe these are the major uh, limit to the growth of technological development and entrepreneurship in Iran. But uh, at the same time, there are many opportunities over there. Y uh, use eager to progress. We have, I told you, the, you if you have the uh, pyramid of the population in Iran, they used to have a certain place and they are eager for progress. We have a certain niche market over there could help development, technological and uh, economical development. Popularization of information technology is a true, I would say, tool. A true, it is really true that internet and cell phone has certain influence in Iran. 
let me talk more about the opportunities. This young talented resources is more than 4 million, 4 million 400 college students. Uh, an eagerness for empowerment and progress. The, the young generation are eager to progress. They want to uh, be creative. They want to be, uh, to have the, their own place in the world, and they want to work in a world-class manner. I believe this is the most important opportunity, the most important asset we have, the young generation, and such as they are eager for empowerment and progress. Uh, I, mentioned, I told you, the other opportunity I would say is niche market. The, the oil industry, petroleum industry, is a huge market over there. Uh, one of the speakers mentioned in the morning that we should think about uh, added value in uh, oil and maybe petrochemical oil and gas, not just selling oil and gas. It could be a very certain opportunity over there. They are, they are in need of IT development, IT systems. They are in need of many, many factors over there. And I, I mentioned you, popularization of internet and cell phone is really important in Iran. The domain name.ir, we have more than 500,000 registered domain under .ir. So internet is, has its own influence in the Iranian society. More than 120 million cell phones are in the hand of people. A lot of relation, communication has been changed. I have to say my, uh, the dreams and need that I may talk about it is membership in global club. I, I told you, uh, economy and uh, technology is a uh, global uh, matter. We should be a member of in the global club could we foster entrepreneurship here? We are in need of ecosystem for high-tech development. And I believe the solution for economical situation in Iran is entrepreneurship, or as once I heard, technopreneurship is the right uh, term for that. Entrepreneurship in technological development, in knowledge-based economy. Technopreneurship, technopreneurship is the certain solution for the Iranian situation for development economical development in Iran. Let me, uh, over this uh, background, uh, if we, we would like to go through um, uh, knowledge-based economy as an initiative for development, let us think about uh, how we can do it. I have some simple ideas. I would like to share them with you, and as I mentioned, I would like to discuss it more with uh, either of you to find a, uh, okay, all, we all of us uh, talked about entrepreneurship is good, the development in uh, information technology development is necessary for us, but how, what concrete solution, what concrete solution can we offer? I have three suggestions here, just very uh, basic ideas, just bring to your attention to discuss it for further. Uh, I, I have called them STEM lab, silicon hull, silicon parts, just the name for the idea I have. I want to uh, talk more about any of them. Uh, maybe I have five more minutes, you know, I can, okay, I can go fast. These are ma mainly some of, uh, some of uh, lessons that I have learned here in at Stanford and in Silicon Valley. A STEM lab is a certain lab in Stanford to promote educational system for in the K-12 for high school students. In Iran, this educational system is very rigid, very, very, I would say, uh, very, very, very rigid uh, educational system in high school level we have there. No creativity you can find easily over there. So I believe extracurriculum activity is needed for development of educational system, edu for developing the uh, students to have the opportunity for creativity. Uh, in the new era, they call it a STEM lab, science, technology, engineering, and math. We could have some STEM lab, a model of a STEM lab as an extracurriculum, maybe 
in various places we could establish such a STEM lab. And as an extracurriculum activity, students may come there. We had a, a experience before. You all may remember Kanun Parvarish Fikri, Kudakan Nojavanan, Institute for Intellectual Development of Children and Young Adults. They, they are very, very successful model, but they were focused on um, art, arts and maybe popularization of sciences. They, they did a lot of good job, but I believe an STEM lab could be an annex to these uh, branches of Kanun and would bring opportunity for students to, because in 21st century, the innovation and collaborative problem solving skills are the most important thing in the learning system. Learning science by, by creating invention to solve real world problems. And create, uh, be creative and innovational learning system will bring, will uh, produce uh, entrepreneurship mind and culture of entrepreneurship from the grassroots. We, we have to focus on the grassroots as high school and middle school too. This is my first suggestion. We should think about STEM lab or some places that K-12 students could have um, opportunity to develop their ability and creativity. The second one, I may call it Silicon Hall. I, uh, later on, I thought it was better, I call it Silicon Garage. Uh, I mean, uh, these 4 million, 400, uh, 400,000 students, they are in need of some support of training and mentorship. Uh, it couldn't happen all of a sudden with, with simple things. You cannot be expected they could become to technopreneurship and entrepreneurship. I believe some sort of, I call it a silicon garage. I say, as in, I, I have in mind an NGO, an NGO like uh, could be around the country, very simple idea. And a lot of people, these young, talented students, graduates can go there and run it by themselves, just some some sort of leadership they are needed for them. Just we should bring a space knowledge and connectivity run by members, including events. They can bring events and governing and operation. Mentorship workshops, festival by members for members could happen. This Silicon Garage could be around the country, various places, and a lot of young talented students and graduates could be there and be trained to be entrepreneur and technopreneur. And this idea of silicon parts, this is the third suggestion that I have. You know, we have a bunch of Iranian uh, talented students or graduates around the world, outside Iran. I mean this silicon parts as a program, as, at, as an institute around the world. Maybe we can start in Silicon Valley. There are more than almost 200 students at Stanford right now. But most of them are going, they, of course, Stanford and Silicon Valley are a certain place to be educated in entrepreneurship and be creative. But they, are, they have a lot of obstacles for them. We should have support young, talented students around the world with a program. I would say call it Silicon Park, Silicon Persia, whatever you like, you can, we can call it. I mean a program that we support Iranian talented outside Iran to be entrepreneur, to be technopreneur. And I am sure any company in, in Silicon Valley around the world would help, would improve uh, technological development inside Iran. For any, any Iranian could establish a company outside Iran, more than five may be, be supported, more than five companies would be supported inside Iran an organization to foster entrepreneurship among Iranian worldwide, I mean that. A bridge to encourage and educate next generation of entrepreneurs. Pejman John mentioned that. Pejman John is doing fine. I believe we could be more organized on this idea to uh, support next generation and education them, educate them. Uh, founders, I believe, could be success successful Iranian entrepreneurs and senior professionals worldwide. Benefits for them is networking. We should not uh, just, it is not uh, a charity for them. They should be professional in this way too. We should be professional in this way too. People come to this organization, benefits in networking and support and satisfaction of young entrepreneurs. Just Sai John mentioned that, how the satisfaction is there if you can support 
young entrepreneurs. And also opportunity to join new startups. Many investors can come there and find new ideas, new companies, new startups that they can invest over them. Uh, I believe such an institution could go also studies on entrepreneurship and an economical development and publishing white paper could be very beneficial for the uh, institution and people and uh, academia in Iran. We can organize online classes and workshop, personal mentorship and support. All could be for uh, some part of this idea. And my final word. دست به دست هم دهیم به مهر رو میهن خیش کنیم بابا So the people have spoken and the number one question for this session is Professor Tabesh why do all of your students love you so much the room has spoken, the online have spoken. I love also all of my students so much. I love them. All right, and we have, one, we have time for one more question. So have you noticed a decrease in brain drain in recent years? And are you still writing many recommendation letters for your students? Maybe there's some of them in the audience here, it seems. <laughs> yeah, actually, this problem of brain drain is an old problem. Through the history, you can find it. And maybe it depends on economical, political situation. It, it happens. But I believe if we, we can manage it in a natural way, in an organic and original way, we will have benefit from it. We, the other way, maybe some, sometimes it is not in a right mood. But we can manage it in an organic and an original way. If any, any of Iranian talented, establish a company in Silicon Valley, I am sure after a while this sanction this will, uh, will not be anymore. And any company here would have five more companies in Iran. They can support them. So in an organic and natural way, it is okay. But whenever it is, everything is chaotic, you cannot do anything. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> It was a great talk.